Hey guys, this is Bill Rice with Age Lead Store, and I'm gonna to talk today about one of the things that's probably the most challenging things for any salesperson to really get comfortable with, and that's cold calling. And today, I'm gonna to give you seven techniques that will help you up your game when you're cold calling. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about cold calling. And there are seven techniques. And really, cold calling shouldn't be as hard as it is. But man, there are definitely some mental barriers. There's some resistance to, to rejection that we all face just kind of as natural, uh, healthy human beings. Uh, we don't like people to say no to us. We don't like people to react negatively to us. And so I'm going to give you seven techniques that will actually help to take down the defensiveness uh, of your actually of your outbound prospect that you're calling. And these can be everything from age leads, which of course we talk about a lot. Um, they could be just past clients. Right there's a natural reaction uh, to someone reaching out, particularly on the phone, uh, but it also happens in email and text messages. But reaching out in an unexpected way, and that ultimately is what a cold call is. So these seven techniques will help to make um, not only the call itself um, a little more uh, inviting um, and and invoke less defensive triggers from the person that you're calling, but also get you in a positive space and an effective space to actually get over some of your own anxiety to kind of making that first call and getting into the flow. So let's get started. Number one, let's make the call all about them. So a typical call, cold call often starts with something like this. Hey, this is Bill from eMortgage Leads, uh, and we have some great age leads that I want to sell you, right? Or I have some great age leads that I think you'll be interested in. Um, and you can notice in that it took a long time before I even got to the you part, right? The person that I'm talking to. It was all about me, who I am, what I have to sell. And actually in that opening, I didn't really even get to the you part. So immediately, as you would expect, um, the people are going to say, this is a salesperson, which I'm not, I definitely want I want to embrace the fact that I'm a salesperson when I call. So one of the, the big mistakes I think a lot of people do is they try to hide the fact that they're there to sell something or they're a salesperson. So I'm not advocating that, but we did lead with that really heavily. Um, and so the person never saw the benefit in that opening statement and my opening um, sort of script there. I never got to how this benefits you. So here's a little bit of a better approach. This is the way I like to do it. Hey, Jim, this is Bill. And believe it or not, and this is scary, um, but I like to pause there for a second because what happens there in that introduction is, hey, Jim, this is Bill. They start to kind of go in their memory banks and say, who is Bill? Who is Bill? Right? Salespeople don't introduce themselves kind of in that familiar way. If this is a past client, especially take advantage of this sort of opening technique. Technique. So you're going to pause and that way they feel like they're in control of the conversation, um, but they're going to be taking so much time processing now you're going to get to go to your kind of your second line, but it almost feels like you've been invited in at that point because you paused. They haven't given you any sort of objective objections and you move forward. And so the second part of that is, hey, I'm reaching out today because I know you're a mortgage broker um, with hometown lenders and have been a broker for several years. And I know how hard it is to hit that monthly number month after month. So in that, I did a couple of different things, right? I told them one, like, I know who you are. I know what you're struggling with. I know what your challenge is. Um, so one, it gives, creates some affinities like, Hey, I'm not really calling you out of the blue. I know your name. I know who you work for. I know that you're an experienced mortgage broker. Um, and so I set everything up, um, to say, Hey, I know you. I have some information about you, um, that, that makes this not a cold call, right? And then the second thing is I also probably know one of your pain points. And so, um, that the whole opening script there, um, is all about the person that you're talking to. So number one, um, make it all about them. And then at the back end, identify who you are and what you're there to do, um, obviously. So again, use those opening familiar lines, give them pause so that they feel like they're in control while they're processing, talk about what the benefit is right away, and then begin to identify yourself. 
Number two, have a goal for each and every call. Um, and so as you're drilling through lots of leads and making high volumes, you may think, hey, Bill, this is like, I, I don't always have a goal for, you know, I call hundreds of leads a day, or maybe I make 50 calls a day. And that's fine. Even at that level, it's really important to quickly scan in your CRM, see what information you have, and try to find something in there that gives you a goal for that call. So if it's a brand new lead, it just kind of came inbound from the internet, or you just loaded up to your database, uh, that goal could just be simply being able to make a contact right make that initial contact but you still want to have a goal introduce yourself have a goal for that call my goal for this is hopefully to schedule an appointment um, but make it specific right if you've got some more history maybe there's somebody in your pipeline that you, you know they've got to do some credit work or maybe they're saving up for a down payment again quickly scan it through your CRM you'll immediately know what the goal for that call is and it will start to make your calls even though you're using scripts, which I advocate, uh, it's going to make those calls feel a little more familiar um, and they're going to be targeted at that person. So they won't, again, feel like cold calls because you took just 30 seconds or less, maybe even while you're dialing, even if you're using an auto dialer, I used to do this all the time, use auto dialers, but I could still quickly come up with an objective for that particular call. Use assumptive language. So often as salespeople, uh, we will open a call with an apologies. Hey, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. Hey, do you have a second? And instead, I'm always an advocate of assumptive language. Always assume that you're going to go to the next step. So use language like, what is the next step? If you're talking to them, um, everyone has kind of their, whether you're talking B2B or, or business to consumer like we are in mortgage and insurance, um, they have a buying process. And so with a question like, hey, what's next or what, what should be our next step? That allows you um, to open the floor for them to tell you what their process of buying is. That may be including a spouse. That may be thinking about something. That may be getting another piece of information. Um, you can even, uh, ahead of that, you can do things like, hey, I've got uh, I need a few pieces of information so that we can move forward, right? So, or, hey, let's fill out this quick app so that I can see what you're qualified for, right? So you're assuming that they're ready to move to the next step. So always advocate using that assumptive language. Create a script and use it. Now, when I talk about a script, I like to think about it a little bit differently. Um, probably the first thing that popped into your mind when I said create a script was to literally write out everything that you're going to say and memorize that and go through it step by step by step by step by step. Maybe even reading it um, from that script directly. And I don't advocate that because it sounds very mechanical and robotic as you would expect. When I talk about a script, think more like a movie actor. So when a movie actor gets a part, right, they have a script that's given to them. It's written out in great detail how they're supposed to act, what they're supposed to feel, and exactly what they're supposed to say. But then that actor sits down and intently uh, goes into and becomes that character, right? And then they start to give it their own flavor, their own interpretation of that script. And that's what I advocate. So write the full thing out. But then I want you to practice that script and make it your own. Or if you're in a shop that gives you a script, which a lot do, again, study that like an actor and become that character. Make it your own. Uh, give it your natural flavor uh, such that although you have all the guidelines and maybe this ends up becoming bullet points on your desk because uh, you still want that guideline, right? Um, it will help you uh, if you actually kind of look at it and step into it, uh, step into it as, as though you're stepping into a role as an actor. But the script is so important because uh, you don't want to leave out elements. Um, if you're in a heavily regulated or compliant oriented market uh, like mortgage or insurance, it's important that you that you do the right things and you follow the process. Uh, so definitely advocate using a script. It also keep you from sounding like a cold call where you're like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't expect for someone to actually answer and I don't know what to say and I'm humming and hauling and I don't, I don't really know what that journey is that I'm trying to take you on. It feels really disconcerting from the other end of the phone uh, for that process. So definitely use a script. Um, and then number five, practice your opening. And when I say practice your opening, I mean practice it out loud, right? So often we'll read the script, we'll play it in our head, it'll sound perfect. We're like, oh, we got this down. And then we pick up the phone and we say it over the phone and it's a mess, right? We, we don't really have it perfect, doesn't really flow, we stumble over the words, right? It's really important to open 
your mouth and let the sound come out uh, and actually practice it over and over out loud until it becomes smooth, the words flow, uh, you own it and you embrace it. The other thing I advocate with this out loud uh, practicing approach is record it and listen to it and watch it back. Nothing harder than watching yourself be videoed uh, and then playing it back and kind of critiquing it, but you will get better. You'll find what your little tick is, the thing that you say over and over and over again that you got to get rid of, right? Um, and so those things are really important. Like, so is one of mine. You just heard it, right? And I'm going to see that when I play back the video over and over again. Why did I say so, so many times? But so it's important. Video that part, play it back and start to work on your delivery. The other thing is role playing is great um, way to practice this as well. If you've got a, a sales lead or even just a, a colleague, uh, it's really important to, to practice and do that role playing. It will hone your skills. This is a, a, essential uh, when you're practicing overcoming objections, right? Which is another thing that we'll talk about uh, in the future. But you definitely, if you, you have the opportunity uh, to do that role playing, introduce that in uh, as part of your kind of out loud practice. But you do have to open your mouth. Don't play in your head. It'll always sound perfect. You got to say it out loud. So get in the closet, go in your basement, go outside, take a walk, talk to yourself, whatever it takes. But practice that script um, out loud. And of course, I encourage recording it. Um, like I said before, practice overcoming objections. Um, this is one of those things that I got in the habit of. Um, anytime I'm on a call and I hear an objection, uh, especially if it's one I haven't heard before, I like to jot that down. Uh, because at the end of the day, as I'm sort of riding home, I will replay those objections. And if you've ever been in a conversation or been in an argument, maybe with your spouse or something like that, um, you always go back later and you say, oh, if I had just said this, right? Same thing applies to ob overcoming objections. That's essentially what's happening, right? You're getting objections. Uh, if there are things that you practice and you know about, you cleanly move through those, right? You know exactly how to approach those objections, how to make them feel comfortable with the next step or how to make them feel comfortable that you've got that sort of concern that they have overcome and handled. Um, if it's brand new, um, it's going to be it's going to be shaky, right? You're not going to get it right the first time. Um, and so by writing those down and playing that back in your head, oh, I should have said this, or I could have said this, and maybe this would have happened. Um, those are really important exercises. And so one of the things that I love to do is write those down as they happen. Um, usually I have a, um, a legal pad. And so every call is a new sheet generally. Um, and so I go through at the end of the day, all those little objections that I've written down, um, I sort of cue them up in my head. And as I'm driving home on my commute, I actually replay those and um, sort of what if scenarios that I can do. And then that way, those objections uh, either will go into my scripts, um, or I will just have practiced them. And so the next time I hear them, I'll be better equipped to make the right response. Number seven, last one. Um, is create a call list and then call, 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 call. Um, now, so this really depends on your CRM system um, and really the type of uh, sales that you do. Uh, if you've got inbound internet leads or uh, you're loading up age leads and you have kind of really long list or you're using a dialer, now, some of this is already done for you, um, but so many of you are, are perhaps smaller shops or have less leads to work with. Um, and, and one of the weaknesses of that model is that you have a lot more flexibility sort of to prepare to call and to think about calling. And so there's a tendency for you to kind of hunt and peck through. And that really doesn't work if you're doing cold calling or if you have a lot of leads um, that are not hot, not warm, that you're not in active conversations about closing a mortgage or um, co you know closing in on an insurance policy. And, and so the best defense against that sort of preparing to call or preparing to do sales or preparing for your cold calling um, and doing a lot of uh, sort of getting ready, um, which is just a, our, our defense for not having to make that first call is, is literally create in your CRM uh, some sort of filter or some sort of report or some sort of view that allows you to just literally click and dial, click and dial, click and dial, click and dial, uh, set up yourself. A lot, a lot of times we'll do a power half hour or something like that where we say, hey, for 30 minutes, 
All I'm going to do is dial, dial, dial. Or maybe I'm going to get that list and I'm going to say, I'm going to dial until I get my first connect and have my first good conversation. So make up some little mini goals. But the most important thing is have that list prepared. Have a goal in mind, how many people that you're going to call in a fixed amount of time uh, and just dial. Once you get into that flow, it'll be easier. But if you're hunting and pecking around every single time you do that, you're going to have to get over that dialing anxiety, right? Making that first call. And if you do it one at a time and not have that list and that goal to drill through that list, uh, then you're going to have to deal with that anxiety every single time you hang up the phone. So those are the seven. Again, let's do a real quick recap of all seven of those. Uh, number one, make it all about them, lead with them, and then close in with who you are. Have a goal for every call, as small as it might be, or as quick as you might come to that conclusion, make sure that you have a goal. Create a script and use it. Um, do this like a movie actor does. Uh, step into that role and make it your own, but start with a script. Make sure that you cover everything you want to do and do it in the flow that you prepared. Number five, practice your opening out loud. Make sure that that opening, that first uh, 20 seconds or less, is as clean as possible because that's going to be your only um, opportunity, just like email marketing. You don't get the subject line right? It doesn't matter what you have to say after that. If you don't get the opening right, it doesn't matter how wonderful your sales pitch is, how wonderful your closing is. You got to have that opening down pat. And the only way to do that is to practice it over and over and over again out loud, not in your head. And number six, overcome your top objections. And again, my favorite way to do this, write them down as you encounter them, have them incorporated in your script and just keep playing them back. What if I do this? What if I say that? I should have said this and go through all that what if scenario until you really get smooth at making the prospect confident that you understand their concern, you understand uh, their anxiety at that moment and exactly how you can make them confident that you've got that handled. And then last, create a call list and dial, dial, dial. Hope you enjoyed uh, our seven techniques to making cold calling more effective. Uh, as always, we would encourage you to subscribe. There's lots more good sales training coming. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, and then, of course, ding the little bell there and you'll get notified in real time because we're going to do some live stuff as well. So hope you enjoyed that. Again, this is Bill from Age Lead Store. Uh, if you want to practice any of these techniques, as always, the very best way to do that uh, is with Age Leads. They're super cheap. You can get a high volume of them and you can drill through and practice these uh, in a very low cost, low risk way. So hope to see you on the next video.